Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today's video is probably going to be one of the most controversial topics we've ever talked on. I trust you've heard about the ongoing war between the two nations known as Israel and Palestine. Many of us will definitely have our own separate assertions pertaining to the dispute between the two nations, while some of us do not even know why exactly these two nations are fighting or what they're fighting for in the first place. So, that's the topic of today. What was it that ensued to make these two nations go to war with each other? But before we begin, kindly smash that like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on future videos from us. The Israel-Palestinian conflict is complex and spans decades. It originated in the late 19th and early 20th century when Jewish and Arab national movements emerged in the Middle East. The United Nations Partition Plan in 1947 led to the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, triggering a series of conflicts. Wars in 1948, 1967, and 1973 further deepened tensions. On November 29, 1947, the United Nations UN, voted to partition the British Mandate of Palestine into a Jewish state and an Arab state. Clashes broke out almost immediately between Jews and Arabs in Palestine, beginning with the Arab ambush of a bus carrying Jewish passengers from Netanya to Jerusalem on November 30th. In 1956 came the Suez Crisis. Tensions mounted again with the rise to power of Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser, a staunch pan-Arab nationalist. Nasser took a hostile stance toward Israel. In 1956, Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal, a vital waterway connecting Europe and Asia that was largely owned by French and British concerns. France and Britain responded by striking a deal with Israel, whose ships were barred from using the canal and whose southern port of Elat had been blockaded by Egypt, wherein Israel would invade Egypt. France and Britain would then intervene, ostensibly as peacemakers, and take control of the canal. In 1967, it was the Six-Day War. Arab and Israeli forces clashed for the third time June 5th, 10, 1967, in what came to be called the Six-Day War, or June War. In early 1967, Syria intensified its bombardment of Israeli villages from positions in the Golan Heights. When the Israeli Air Force shot down six Syrian MiG fighter jets in reprisal, Nasser mobilized his forces near the Sinai border, dismissing the UN force there, and he again sought to blockade Elat. In May 1967, Egypt signed a mutual defense pact with Jordan. Israel answered this apparent Arab rush to war by staging a sudden air assault, destroying Egypt's air force on the ground. The Israeli victory on the ground was also overwhelming. Israeli units drove back Syrian forces from the Golan Heights, took control of the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt, and drove Jordanian forces from the West Bank. Importantly, the Israelis were left in sole control of Jerusalem. In 1973 was Yom Kippur War. The sporadic fighting that followed the Six-Day War again developed into full-scale war in 1973. On October 6th, the Jewish holy day of Yom Kippur, thus Yom Kippur War, Israel was caught off guard by Egyptian forces crossing the Suez Canal and by Syrian forces crossing into the Golan Heights. The Arab armies showed greater aggressiveness and fighting ability than in the previous wars, and the Israeli forces suffered heavy casualties. The Israeli army, however, reversed many of its early losses and pushed its way into Syrian territory and encircled the Egyptian Third Army by crossing the Suez Canal and establishing forces on its West Bank. Still, it never regained the seemingly impenetrable fortifications along the Suez Canal that Egypt had destroyed in its initial successes. The issue of Palestinian refugees became apparent 
with millions displaced during these conflicts. The West Bank and Gaza Strip have been focal points, and the status of Jerusalem remains a contentious matter. Peace processes, including the Oslo Accords in the 1990s, aimed to address the conflict but faced challenges. Settlement construction in the West Bank, security concerns and disputes over borders persisted. Efforts for a two-state solution at this point began, but achieving lasting peace remained elusive, with ongoing violence and geopolitical complexities shaping the conflict. Figures, such as casualty numbers and economic impact, made it a fluid situation to access. The Israel-Palestinian conflict has endured for decades, marked by a series of conflicts and geopolitical complexities. But in May 2021, the first major conflict in recent time began anew. Tensions escalated when Hamas, a Palestinian militant group, launched rockets attacking Israel. This triggered the Israel-Gaza conflict, resulting in significant casualties and destruction. During the 11-day conflict, Hamas fired thousands of rockets into Israel, while Israel conducted airstrikes in Gaza. The violence resulted in civilian casualties on both sides, with international concerns about the humanitarian impact. Efforts to broker a ceasefire were eventually successful, mediated by Egypt and the United Nations. In the Gaza Strip, more than 11,000 people have been killed so far. More than a third of these victims are children. Electricity, fuel, food and water sources have been cut by order of the Israeli Defense Minister. And in Israel, 1,200 people were killed, most of them civilians, and more than 200 taken hostage during attacks carried out by Hamas and other armed groups on the 7th of October. The United Nations General Assembly has voted overwhelmingly in favor of a resolution calling for a ceasefire in the war-torn Gaza. The resolution passed with 153 countries voting in favor, 23 abstaining, and 10 countries voting against, including Israel and the United States. While the resolution is non-binding, it serves as an indicator of global opinion. We also join the established global opinion in a quest for peace in Israel-Gaza territories. We call for a ceasefire and give diplomacy a chance to serve its purpose of restoring peace in these regions. Human lives are too precious to be lost to such futile wars. That's all we have for today. Kindly give the video a like. And we're shooting for a thousand subscribers before the year runs out. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel also. Bye for now.